Sean here, back, back to, to talk to you about AI. This time we're only going to talk about AI as it pertains to video. In my last AI video, I said literally all those things can join together and make a feature film. Are we already close to that reality? People on Twitter seem to think so. We have text to video. We have image to video. The possibilities are endless. You can make your own new Star Wars film just with words, right? Well, not yet but maybe someday. I'm gonna try to get past all the noise and see what's really good with AI, what you can use as a motion graphics artist and what could be useful to us, and also the scary stuff that might replace some of the jobs or tasks, but is it really going to keep snowballing and just turn into this monster that we have no control over and replace all our jobs? I have reason to believe that no, it's gonna stop and there might be a ceiling. Maybe we've already hit that ceiling. Let's go have a look. Hey, welcome to our show. This is the future where everyone is turned into a giant yellow plastic doll. I love my plastic plastic doll life. Look at my hands, look at my face, look at my mouth! So there is some software available where there's no wait list. You can just join right now. It's Runway ML. I'm sure you've heard of it. Gen 1 is available to the public, but then Gen 2 is not yet available to the public, but we'll talk about that a bit later. With Gen 1, you can do things like video to video, which is how I created all the weird video clips at the start of this video. The results are very mixed. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't really work. But that's kind of the problem with software like this. You don't really have control. That's the problem with all this AI stuff. You don't have control. And if you want control, you have to get really nitpicky and like fix things in post and at the end of it all it almost just takes as long as it would have been just to do it from scratch and would have looked nicer if you just did it from scratch the normal old school way control that's the real problem here. So here's Spline, and it's it's pretty cool. You can use text prompts to animate in 3D software, which if you've never used three, like part of me, I don't know, I would. When you watch the ad, it's very basic, kind of like primitive shapes. This is all pretty basic stuff, but we'll help you create a scene really fast. Get all your primitives and all your assets, and then from there, start to tweak things. I'm sure at some point when you're using text to describe what you want, it's gonna fall apart, and it's just not gonna be able to be specific enough, or it's not gonna understand. It still doesn't cut out the artist or the person who's executing what a creative director has laid out and designed, because at some point, you're just not gonna be able to get granular enough to really change things how you want. I could be wrong, but that's the impression I get. I don't know if I would get a whole new platform to do this with because clearly Blender or Cinema or After Effects are going to be doing something like this. This is where things get very interesting is text to AI. So this is a presentation of the best of what something like this Gen 2 has to offer. And the first thing I noticed is the frame rate is very chunky, slow. Will it ever get to a point where you can have a smooth like 24 frames a second, no flickering digital artifacting and that kind of stuff. The most obvious way that we've seen this accomplished is with a corridor digital animation. For just one second, before we continue, make sure you check out the Old Ufemi store for three packs that I've made. Scribble accents, scribble fonts, and film grain builder. Use these assets, textures, and transitions to plus up your edits. Click the link in the description to learn more. All right, back to the video. Did we just change animation forever? You've seen this video, I know you have, and I have some thoughts. First of all, yes, it's cool. This is an example of like video to video generation. You're taking a video that's been filmed and then you're getting it to generate this art over top of it. But the backgrounds have been created with 3D animation and these characters are based on someone who had to be filmed on a green screen with a costume. And even still, the results look like basic rotoscoping. There's, there is some extra detail in the faces that give it some more design and they reduce the flip a lot but I'm still distracted by you know kind of a lot of what's going on up here and like what in the world when you start to look at it closely it, it is a mess but definitely a cool use case that I haven't seen many people use since because again you're gonna need actors performing on a green screen wearing the costumes does this replace animators no not completely and rotoscoping has been around for a while in other automated ways there's this weird Lord of the Rings Ralph Bakshi cartoon here they're actually drawn over frame by frame we've seen other cartoons like Akira and, and great anime and Disney movies as well where they've drawn over live action people. And so using AI to do that cuts out that person, but the results still aren't as good. But even back then they had automated ways, which, okay, it's not nearly as good. It's, but this is just live action people with like a bunch of strange filters over top. <laughs> and no animated film has really done that since. It was done to save money. You can see the faces are actually drawn on. And this was done in the 70s. But that's the first thing I think of when I see that. The results Corridor Digital got far superior. It'll be interesting to see if Netflix or someone actually incorporates this type of technology into the work. I think there would be an uproar. And I don't know if I could stand watching it with all this glitching. The only way they were able to solve it was by using DaVinci Resolve and using these deep flicker effects over and over. And even still, it has some issues. Oh, why were his teeth yellow there for a second? Ugh. 
And I think anime has already found a way to cut corners by using 3D animation and having the characters look 2D, 3D into some really good results in, in games like the Dragon Ball Z video game. I wonder if they were to shoot at 8K, if they could just get better results with these wide shots in their faces. What? Oh, what happened there? Was that intentional? Look at all the faces. That's very strange. What I find more impressive is, is the backgrounds. All the backgrounds, of course, were created by actual 3D artists. But then those backgrounds were inserted into Stable Diffusion to give them a more painting look. Look. I feel like they could have gotten better results by maybe like an anime you don't have every frame of the person if you just had a still frame but the background moving and that his eyeballs are just constantly changing AI makes me a little nauseous but these guys have been pushing the technology they have something new almost every month pertaining to AI so who knows maybe a few months it's going to solve all these problems we see right now but everyone seems to think AI is this steep incline and it's just it's going to get there I just have a feeling that there's a ceiling. When it comes to capturing live action people, could you add a chainsaw to a person's face? You couldn't just put a person in a costume then have it rotoscoped with AI. It's a little too crazy. But then that takes us to text to video, where the world is your oyster. I mean, look what text to video can get <laughs> This is the stuff of nightmares for sure. So this is using Runway ML Gen 2, which is what we saw that ad for. That looks pretty good, that's pretty crazy. This stuff definitely boggles my mind. I don't know how they do it. I wish you could see the source of a lot of this footage and see how close it is to it. But yeah, you have this choppy frame rate. Could you get a smoother result? I mean, it's it's pretty impressive. I'm not gonna lie, this one kind of messes with me. <laughs> you don't look so good. Are you okay? I feel really weird. I feel like I can feel you. Very clever. It's daydreaming out now. What in the world? It's impressive because it's made from words. Would it be impressive at all if you just saw it by itself? You'd probably be like, what kind of a fever dream am I looking at here? Ooh, creepy and weird. He's got a consistent face though. Both of these have consistent people in them. I mean, my mind is already changing. I think this guy's stuff is showing a consistent narrative somewhat. We're seeing the same monster in different shots, the same actors. So he filmed himself and he added everything in here. Okay. But then this is all text to video. Each shot was prompted, voice of generally. Who can deny the power of a stormtrooper on a beach? I think the point of this is more so just how random of a statement this is and what they came up with. I don't know why he moves so janky. This looks like a legit time lapse in almost every way. Because you start to see some stuff messing up here, but it could just be artifacting from compression. These ducks are sketchy as heck. This is the NVIDIA version of text to video, I believe. It reminds me when Mid Journey and all these AI things started and they were in beta and it was kind of just like a janky and you're like, whoa, it's impressive that it came up with that image, even though it looks weird. I mean, these grapes rotating looks quite perfect. This Bigfoot walking sideways. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is coming for us. We're seeing, again, better rotoscoping techniques in software that is not After Effects, as well as even just painting the person out. And that's pretty good. They even retained the shadow. You can see some of the blurriness, but I see that kind of work definitely going away. Here's another story created with ChatGPT as a script and text to video in Gen 2 and Runway. There's some pretty cool shots in here. Of course, things really fall apart when you look closely, the faces, but that's better results than what we saw before. I don't understand how it does the 3D space so well, like the interior of the space and everything that's a cool shot man kissing and holding ooh, stuff gets very strange but this shot of the ship going by i mean it's morphing that's the only problem but the compositing within the scene everything it looked really good it looked like a a model like a physical model <laughs> this is where stuff really starts to mess with you and make me nauseous it's, it's like oh it's like a dream you would have if, if you could record your dreams pizza magic. The titles and everything were generated in After Effects and it was composited with like a VHS filter but all the footage is all from runway text to video. <laughs> steam coming out of his arm. Cool. Here's a pretty good example of taking an existing cartoon. Kind of similar to what Corridor Digital did, but they added in like real faces and textures. I don't know why he's constantly looking at the camera. They must not have many images to work with. It's an interesting art experiment, but at the end of the day, I mean, I would still rather watch the cartoon. So I found this on Reddit and thought it was pretty impressive. Grandpa Snoop done with Temporal Kit. There was a lot of cutting, so I imagine they kind of took the best small moments, but the small moments Look pretty neat, reminds me of like a video game where they have that kind of cartoony, cell shaded look. I really think some of the best results you can get are image to video. It just seems to come up with some cool stuff and has a lot more reference to play with. I've seen Wonder Studio. This has been the most impressive to me and the most useful. But like I said, the people who benefit from this are going to be people like me who aren't the best at 3D modeling and animating. If you could do the whole District 9 film using something like Wonder Dynamics, man, me, as someone who wants to tell stories with film, this would just really blast open the door. 
Here's another example of Wonder Dynamics, like these soccer players, all that. That is really cool. Generates all these different files for you. Eric had a good thought on this. He said, now if you're a character animator, mocap has existed for a while. One of the advantages of animation is to go beyond reality. It's not as simple as just making a cartoon character move. It's all about exaggeration and giving life, personality, and individuality to a character. So my thoughts are if you could get it as a place to start, but mocap, I mean, just look at this. No Pixar characters move like this. Could AI eventually study how an anime character does move and then apply it to this mocap and like find the middle ground? Probably. So as this guy said, people think AI video will improve faster than it will. It's able to fusion mid-journey went quickly because it's easier to fool a human mind in one single image versus a moving scene. AI video will look weird for a long time and has a much bigger uncanny valley to cross. AI plus Unreal 3D though. Two years, Netflix will have a section for AI created movies. This is not AI. This is a video game using filters and, and just good game design to make it look photo real. This is not AI, even though it's in this AI list. Let me go back to the start. AI started to develop results. Here are the best AI videos I've found. And then he lists a bunch of things that are not AI. So make sure you just look closely at a lot of this stuff. Dreams is software that's been around for like four years, five years, and it's very cool. Wow, full length video of superheroes. So it's like people are using AI imagery to make some creative stuff, but some of it's just bizarre and kind of stupid. Will we get past this weird glitchy, warpy well, hurdle, this uncanny valley where things keep changing? People who are really about to lose their jobs are physicians. This study found that chat GPT outperforms physicians. Obviously chat GPT GPT can't catch you open though, so uh, I mean, I think physicians would probably just use ChatGPT if they need it. See, it's kind of dumb. ChatGPT's not gonna do surgery on you, okay? This Wes Sanderson Star Wars little things using a mix, it looks like Mid Journey or something to generate the images and then someone took it to After Effects and animated it. Wes Anderson's a good use case for this because his shots are very still and centered. Man, look at the ideas, it's, it's pretty cool. Some more text to AI stuff. This stuff looks smoother. I don't see the bad frame rate issues that we saw before. And if there's there's morphing happening, but it's it's a lot harder to pick out. I mean that that shot's kind of a mess. Can't seem to make people talk very well. See, he's super hyped on text to video, but this still isn't usable. But it does look really close, so I don't know. Maybe that gap is not as big of a gap as we think, or as I think. To this text to video stuff, I just feel like you have less control. With the image to video, you can really define what it is you want. With something like this, it just it kind of falls apart when you stare at it too long. I don't know what it can do six months from now. Maybe not more than this. My question is still is how much control do you have over what's being shown? The people who can figure that out, they're the ones who are going to be making big money off this. I definitely see in the future there being AI engineers or artists who can code and do all this stuff better than anybody else. Is that kind of a sad job to have though? An AI artist. Here we see explosions being used and while I think this is cool, if you could generate this explosion on like a transparent background with alpha so I can drag and drop it onto a plate, but then also if you have a camera moving and it's 3D, I can't really use that asset that way. So could the AI just generate an explosion to a video? And yes, it's very good at making pretty explosions, but how do I use that? I think it's a big call. This will be the successor of VFX works as well. Sources say AI for video is quite good at explosions, rain, flowing water, and fire sources. Here we go. Here's a smooth frame rate. A lot less flickering, but still some warping. That mouth looks really dumb. I don't know what this stuff is on the tree. I don't know what kind of creature that is. Like if you sent this as your animation reel to a company before we knew AI existed, they'd look at this and be like, why is it so bizarre and janky? Look at that car. Look at how many vents that car has. <laughs> Imagine if Bruce Wayne looked like that. It's impressive though. That's pretty good mouth animation work there. Yeah, when it comes to kissing, it's a little awkward. This I find pretty hilarious. I don't know if it's Pepsi or Bud Light. It's constantly warping. <laughs> I love how they're just like making out with the beer cans. There's that explosion and fire that does so well. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ooh. But yes, people are right. If it continues on this trajectory, I mean, it's gonna start looking like real video. I just feel like it won't. But what do I know? What do you think? 
Do you think we're doomed? Do you think this will replace virtually every animation and VFX post-production job out there so that creative directors won't need us anymore and they'll just type in prompts and make whatever? Or maybe they won't even be creative directors anymore. You'll just have a CEO type in prompts. He's his own marketing team. He just types, I need a commercial that's really cool and vibrant. Cool, there you go. Thanks a lot, JetGBT and Runway NML. I've just made my entire marketing campaign with text. Then would you need the CEO? or you're just gonna have a robot running a whole company. I like to think optimistically that we've hit the ceiling. It's gonna stop and we will not be replaced and we're all gonna be fine. We're gonna be just fine. Anyways, thanks for watching. My name is Sean and I'll see you guys in the next video or not because ChatGPT will just make the next video for me. Maybe that's what the next video will be. It will just a robot actually making a video about AI and that I will be completely AI generated and you won't even tell the difference. I'll just be gone, tied up in my basement somewhere because my computer has taken over my life.